tell me, Chris, a little bit about employee engagement. So I'm curious to hear how you're keeping your employees engaged in the company, particularly as you're going through this growth phase. Sure. So um, the difficulty with this is you never want your team to sound like a commodity. Um, so I try not to think about it as keeping our employees engaged. I try and think about it as um, how do we make the company a good place to work? And I think that's a, it's a really interesting thing because although we want to make a really successful company, as in we want to make revenue, right? And that's the ultimate aim of a limited company is you want to be a business that is profitable. That is obviously a large goal and we wouldn't have raised money if that wasn't a goal. But at the same time, there's another interesting thing I learned, which is that running a good place to work is an end in and of itself. Mm -hmm. Creating a place to work that people feel empowered, that they're working towards goals, that they're working on a big problem, all of those things, that's what we realized that we wanted to build in the company. Um, so that's what we try and build. That's how we think about keeping employees engaged. Mm -hmm. It's about creating a good place to work. So what that really means is, really tangibly, it's three things. What people want, I'm generalizing when they come into work, is they want to be working on something that they care about. Uh, they want to be working on something that gives them energy. So, you know, they're not drained by doing it. It, it gives them a positive feeling when they do it. Mm -hmm. Um, and thirdly, they want to be working towards something that is a goal in their life. And that goal could be financial. It could be, well, I, I want to make money and mm -hmm. get an amount of savings to buy a house. Or it could be professional. It could be, well, yeah, I want to lead a sales force that's selling projects all throughout the NHS. Mm -hmm. um, and if we can try and do those things, then we've kind of succeeded. So the, the way that you get there is through trying to be really, really on top of what every single team member um, is thinking and feeling. Mm -hmm. um, so again, the practical step from that is we have really, really regular one-to-ones with all of the team. And those one-to-ones, they're not designed to be um, admonishments or a place for me to say what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong. Mm -hmm. It's a place for the team member to say, these are the things that are upsetting me um, these are the things that I would like to be fixed uh, and cr creating an environment that is outside of the day to day um, because the, the minutiae of the day means that you, you often don't have a designated set of time where you can talk about those other things like e email doesn't really cut it slack doesn't really cut it even speaking outwardly in an open front office it doesn't really cut it no. Um, so creating an environment of, yeah, we have 20 minutes, half an hour to talk about whatever you want to talk about, we found is so, so helpful. And so many things come out of that where you're like, well, I just had no idea that you, you felt that way at all. Um, another interesting idea that I found is, um, it's, it's can come across egotistical, but, um, the, the, the other co-founder of the business and I, we have written, uh, guides to how to work with us. Um, so we, we reasoned that there are all these likes and dislikes that mm -hmm. people have about the way that they work. Um, and it could be how you want updates about progress, or it could mm -hmm. be how you want your meetings run, or it could be your, just the things that tick, make you tick, your motivations. Um, and we found, me and the other co-founder, writing these down and putting them in a document for everyone to see, like, you know, this is Chris. Sometimes I'm really short over Slack. Sometimes I walk through the office um, in a bad mood, and this is why. Being really explicit about those things, mm -hmm. um, we found helps a lot. And now different people on the team are like, oh, this is great, can I make one of these? Um, we found that really, that helps a lot. What, <laughs> it's great to hear, by the way, and obviously it also sets people up to be, this is, this is how it is, this is, what, this is what it's like. So actually you're being very open about the environment, which is fantastic. What's the biggest challenge you think facing business leaders today, particularly in your space, you know? Um, so there's a lot of increasing complexity. Um, in terms of what? There are so many different ways and technologies that you can deal with problems nowadays. Mm -hmm. um, 
picking which one to go with, uh, learning what the market is doing, all of that. It's yep. just the expression is drinking from the fire hose. How do you know which information to take in, which action to go on? And it was probably, I mean, I wasn't an entrepreneur 10 years ago, but it was probably simpler 10 years ago. Uh, the other thing that kind of compounds that is the fact that there is so much, there, like everyone wants to be a startup founder. It's, there's just been this trend, right? Everyone's doing it. It's like the cool thing to do. Um, and there's also a lot of capital. There's a lot of money floating around to fund startups. So that means there's a lot of well-funded startups doing a lot of these things. Mm -hmm. um, so it, this healthcare space where we're in, it becomes quite noisy and it becomes quite difficult to see like, which thing is going to rise to the top. Mm -hmm. Of course. Um, so yeah, noise. That's what I'd say. <laughs> noise about things. What's the what's the best piece of business advice you've you've ever received? I mean, you referred back to the book earlier, but I'm just curious what what you believe. Um, the best bit of advice I ever received was to just make sure that uh, you are keeping your best self. Mm -hmm. um, so by that I mean running a company or being a leader in whatever way can be really stressful. Um, you're given a lot of responsibility, and all of that responsibility is on you. Um, the responsibility of the company, how it goes, is all basically down to me and the, the co-founder, but ultimately I'm the CEO, so it comes down to me. Learning how to deal with that stress, making sure that you are your best self on any given day is probably the most important thing you can do because the tendency is to want to um, work all hours of the day to try and make the thing better. And that's probably the wrong inclination because it ends up leading to burnout. Mm -hmm. So making sure that doing a proper audit of what are the things that, I need to do to make me be my best self? Mm -hmm. Is it um, I need exercise? Is it I need time with my family? Is it I need time with my friends? Is it I need to read a book? Is it I need time um, to play video games? Whatever it is, you need to make sure in a given week that you are doing those things because if, you, if you're not, again, it's this move from like you're doing things, you're hand cranking things, you're making things happen to wait, stop, I now need to be a leader and a thinker and if stress impacts me, it will impact the entire future of the company and yeah. the team. Um, so yeah, taking your your health seriously. Which I guess is ironic being a, a healthcare startup founder. <laughs>